I'm Dr. Mark Solomon, and in this video, we're going to discuss cost-effective robotic surgery. Now, this is not the most straightforward topic. There's a lot of accounting, a lot of things and nuances to discuss, so I'm going to do my best to break it down in a substantial manner that makes it make sense. Before we get started, though, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, and also comment below on what topics you want to hear on this channel. It really helps me kind of uh, get an idea of what other content we need to cover. All right. In this discussion today, I want to talk first about the background of cost-effective robotic surgery. But to really to get to that point, we really have to discuss the economics of colorectal robotic surgery. We'll take a deep dive into that. Then we'll go into an economic analysis, essentially doing uh, case studies of different hospital systems and different surgeons that have actually met the bar and gotten to the point where uh, colorectal surgery is quite cost effective. Then we'll discuss some tips to decrease cost finally, and we'll come into a conclusion, some take home points. This is the basic formula that nearly every chief executive officer, chief financial officer looks at every day when it comes to keeping a hospital system, a clinic, or really just an operating room afloat. It is income minus expenses, and whatever you have left is the profit. But let's first talk about what each of these brackets actually mean. So in the column of income, you have two things. Majorly, you have the collections, and then you have investments. So let's talk about this through the lens of a hospital. A hospital has collections that they take, whether that's from an insurance company or they collect money from the patients in terms of the coinsurance or the copay. And insurance collections could be something like fee for service, or they could collect money from insurance for, say, a per diem charge or a DRG, or they get a global collection based on a, a, a procedure that's being done. And then the margins and how much cash is collected completely depends on the contracted rate. So one hospital system may collect a whole lot more money for a robotic colectomy versus another hospital system. That just depends on the strength of the contracted rates and the, the ability to, to negotiate those contracted rates. Um, and then and you have the next uh, type of income, which is investments. This really doesn't have anything to do with you or I, but this is stuff like real estate, how much the real estate is appreciating in value or how much rent they're getting paid, uh, how well they've invested in terms of bonds or stocks or income producing assets or what have you. So those are all the things on the income side of this uh, formula. On the other side, the expense side, these are things like taxes. Uh, on the expenses column as well, stuff like real estate, whether it's rent or a lease payment, what have you. Also on the expense side is salary that they pay out to staff or surgeons. Insurance is also on this. Uh, benefits, capital purchases like a robot, a CAT scanner, whatever. And also part of the expenses column is cost of services rendered. Stuff like how much did the actual total surgical event cost? How much does that x-ray cost or the CT scan cost? How much does it cost to run your cafeteria? Etc. So that's what the income and expense columns uh, look like. And whatever you have left over is a profit. And hopefully you have more money left over and therefore you have more profit. When we talk about cost, there's two types of cost. There's fixed cost and then there's variable cost. It makes sense. So fixed costs are things that are not at all related to volume. These are things like uh, taxes, things like rent. Things like salary, things like uh, capital cost of like a robot, um, things that are very uh, things that are fixed. They have no variability to them, no matter what's going on. They are fixed. But then you have the variable side of the equation of the cost. And the variable side is things that do vary completely depending upon the procedure, such as equipment cost, anesthesia cost, hospital stay complications, number of staplers that you use, number of sutures that you use, how much the mesh cost, etc. Those are variable costs. And when you combine the variable plus the fixed cost, then you get the total cost. All right. When we look at cost, we have to examine it very deeply because the reality is when you look at a lot of the studies that are published nowadays uh, in the literature talking about cost of robotic surgery, many of the published studies demonstrate that robotic surgery is more expensive than laparoscopic or open surgery. But when you dig deep in these studies, most of these things look at data that's included within the robotic learning curve of that surgeon. Most of the data that's included in these studies is based entirely on charges and not necessarily on cost. Most of these studies look at intraoperative events only. This has nothing to do with the included length of stay or the complications that occur uh, in that patient's uh, total event of care. 
But what if we looked at a bigger picture when we talk about cost? What if we looked at something that included more than just the event of the hospital stay? And this is what financial people do. They actually look at the whole event. So in an ideal world, a CFO or a CEO or a good surgeon that's going to talk about cost of care is going to look to increase the income. They're going to also look to decrease the expenses in an effort to increase the profit. That's the goal. They're also going to look at something called depreciation on capital expenditures. You can actually depreciate the cost of greater than $250,000 per year. Uh, and we'll go into the math of that in just a second. There are something called the variable costs in robotic surgery versus laparoscopic surgery. But when you actually look at this, they're actually quite similar. Uh, it depends on the procedure that you do, of course, but the variable costs actually don't differ tremendously between the two. And the reality is, when you examine this, the more something is used, the cheaper each procedure comes. And why is that? Because you have a fixed cost. So the more you use a fixed cost item, when you distribute the cost across more procedures, the single event or that single operation is going to actually cost less money because you're diluting uh, the cost over many, 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 many more cases versus uh, less cases. So let's look at some a uh, little, uh, little example here. If you take a robot, which costs on average $1.8 million, minus what's called the capital depreciation over four years. Again, this is the IRS allowable capital expenditure depreciation over four years. That actually uh, gets you down to the tune of $900,000 over the life of a robot. That's what actually a hospital is paying for a robot. Instead of paying $1.8 million, once the capital depreciation is factored in, over a period of four years, they're actually paying roughly 900 grand for that robot. But if you take over, take that $900,000 cost of that robot, and then you divide it by the seven-year life of the robot, then you uh, it's actually costing around $128,571 per year to own that robot. All right. Also, intuitive also charges about $150,000 per year to own a robot with something called a service contract. So if you add that 150 grand per year service contract to that 128 grand per year cost to own the robot, that's after depreciation, you have an annual fixed cost of $278,000 just to own the robot, just to keep it parked in the corner of a room somewhere. So you can imagine, if you did one operation the entire year, that one operation cost you $278,571 just to do that one procedure. If you do 10 operations, it's going to cost a little less. If you do 100 operations, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to cost you roughly $2,700 per operation once you distribute the cost across that 100 operations. If you do 1,000, look way over here, of course, it's $278 per operation. Etc. Etc. And you can see this is where we are at Advent Health Altamont. We do around 582 operations per year per robot, and that gets us down to a cost of roughly $478 per operation that we do. So that is the fixed cost per operation that we do. It costs around $478 per operation to own the robot and to run it. So if you look at my average fixed cost plus the variable cost, cost of the staple cost of the sutures, cost of everything. My low interior sections robotically cost around $2,600. And then comparing that to my laparoscopic low interior section cost around $2,200. Again, this is just the event of the operating room itself. Nothing outside the uh, operating room, nothing with length of stay, nothing with readmission, nothing with hernia, nothing, like, nothing with complications, just the actual operation per case. Compare that to my right colectomies. Right colectomies use a lot more staplers. And so my laparoscopic right colectomy costs around $3,500 per operation versus my robotic ascending colectomy with intracorporeal osmosis costs around $4,300 per operation. But now let's break this down um, with uh, per operation, low interior section, and we'll go into right colectomies. And we're using me as a case study here. So me as a case study, once I began doing robotic surgery, I actually found that my clinical outcomes improved. And this is where the cost effectiveness of robotic comes in. It's not because a robot is cheaper. It's not. And actually, you have added cost per case. Again, I showed you there that there's fixed cost for using a robot. However, when you do robotic surgery and do it well, your length of stay goes down, your procedure times goes down, your complication rates go down, everything gets better. 
And therefore, cost goes down and profits go up. Remember that equation that I showed earlier. So here, length of stay for my open low interior sections, 8.6 days. When I do my laparoscopic low interior sections, 6.9 days of average length of stay. But when I do my low, my robotic low interior sections, average length of stay now is 4.2 days. This is well before ERAS was implemented. So the length of stay now is around two days, but I wanted to keep this as a, an apples to apples comparison as I could in this uh, diagram. Comparing this to my procedure time, open low interior, 214 minutes, lap, 216 minutes, and then my robot low interior resection data is around 206 minutes. So, so increased efficiency in the operating room also, once you get through your robotics learning curve, improves the clinical outcomes. Now, how does this translate into money? Well, low interior cost data for my open low interior resections, total cost around $32,000 for the operation. When you convert to my laparoscopic low interior resection data, around $18,359. Total cost of care when I was on SI, around $16,000. When I went to XI, got a little bit better, a little bit faster, got my uh, operation streamlined a little bit more. I just shaved off a little bit more, around $15,000, $15,900 per XI operation that I'm doing. Now, what does this tell you? The robot itself is not cheaper, but because my clinical outcomes are better, therefore, the total cost of care comes down. This is not just for low interior, it's also for right colectomy. So here's a study that we did several years ago, looking at my transition between laparoscopic right hemicolectomy with an extracorporeal anastomosis, transitioning to a robotic right colectomy with an intracorporeal anastomosis. Clinical outcomes changed. My length of stay went from 4.8 days in a lap group to 3.3 days in a robot group because I went to intracorporeal anastomosis. OR time stayed about the same, and, and now it's way, way better, but this is what it is at the time. EBL went down. My conversion rate went way, way down. My readmission was at 3.13%, now down at 2.5%. Hernia rate was at 6.7%, went down to zero. 30-day complications for my lap right collecting was at 21% went down to 2.5% in this study that we start, that we ended just before we started ERAS. This translates clearly into clinical outcome improvements, and this therefore translates also into cost savings. So my open right colectomies cost around a total $19,000 for total cost of care, again from admission to discharge, around $15,000 for my lap cases, around $13,000 for my robot right intracorporeal anastomosis cases on the XI robot. A little bit more on SI, but that was, again, I was learning at that point. So now this is roughly where we're at, but even now with ERAS, we're much, actually more streamlined, a little bit cheaper, but I, I didn't show it in this data because I wanted to keep it as close to an apples to apples comparison as, as possible uh, for this, uh, for this um, diagram. So what does this show? This shows that cost actually does come down with proficient use of the robot. And the more you do, the better you get. The better you get, the faster you get. The better your patients do, the better the clinical outcomes, and therefore, the better the cost is. And that's what this shows. All right, let's do two case studies now. I'm going to highlight two of my good friends and colleagues, Dr. Lou Garris out of Charleston, South Carolina, and also Dr. Bob Cleary out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Lou Garris, um, several years ago, like in 2013, was doing a bunch of laparoscopic, hand assisted surgery to the tune of 90%, and he had about a 10% open conversion rate right in that pie chart on the left. Several years later, he was doing robotic surgery, 98% on robotics, about a 2% conversion. All right, why does that make a difference? Well, let's look at this table. This is financial data taken from his hospital. Let's look at the middle column first, where it says completed versus converted. Completed means he completed the operation entirely robotically versus a converted case where he had to convert to, say, an open operation. Under the completed category, he did about 572 of these, and you see all the demographics here. His total cost for the event of the operation, the direct cost per case, roughly was $1,500. His total cost of care was crazy, $8,500 for the direct total encounter cost. This is a whole length of stay. Very cost effective. Let's compare that now to any case that he converted. The conversion cost went from $1,500 up to $1,600, not statistically significant. However, these patients did much worse clinically. In fact, they stayed much longer in the hospital. They almost had a double the length of stay. And they also uh, had um, uh, differences in their discharge criteria. Uh, and so they, the, the total 
encounter costs for the from admission to discharge went from eighty five hundred dollars to around fifteen thousand dollars, almost double. And so this proves that a conversion is very costly. So remember this formula: income minus expenses equals profit. Dr. Lugaris mastered the expenses side. He decreased his expenses, therefore increasing the profit for the hospital. Because his clinical outcomes improved, $13,000 profit to the hospital. Because they were pretty good laparoscopically, but not as good, eleven five. And because they were not nearly as good in the open group, again, because of sepsis, because of readmission, because of hernias, because of whatever, and length, longer length of stay, look at this. They were staying 12.7 days for him, and that translated into a reduction in net profit to the tune of $5,300. Same thing for rectal cancer. Here's the N, here's the time in the operating room, here's the length of stay. Length of stay, robotic, four days, seven days in a lap group, open days, 12.7 days. Not much different from my data. And look, his average direct supply cost, much higher in the robotic group, because robotic surgery does cost a little bit more. But look, the average net profit is way higher in the robotic group because of the he's passing the cost savings of the efficiencies and the clinical outcome improvement of those cases to the profitability of the operation, not necessarily just to the event of the operating room. 11,000 net profit rectal cancer case, uh, $3,800 net profit for the laparoscopic case and about $500 in the open case. All right, let's take another hospital system. This is Dr. Bob Cleary at St. Joseph's Mercy Hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He, let's look at his uh, cases here. He did uh, 44 open colectomies versus 10 laparoscopic colectomies versus 47 uh, robotic colectomies. Look at this. The new patient revenue on average, open case, $27,000. This is either from the patient or the insurance care. This is total, pro this is total revenue that's brought in. Direct cost for the open case, $20,000. When you then take the indirect cost and add it to, it's another $8,000 for an open case. The profit, therefore, on average is $18,000. Why is that? Even though the average net patient revenue is higher, they're staying longer, you have much more co-insurance, much more copay, whatever you have it. They're getting paid more money up front but you're eating into your profitability because the direct costs are actually higher and the indirect costs are higher. And therefore, the profitability on average is lower. And look at the robot uh, column here. They're not staying as long. And therefore, you're not making as much money at the top line here. But you're saving a lot more because the direct cost as well as the indirect cost are less when you compare them because the clinical outcome improvement for a total profitability on average being nearly five times greater in the robot group when compared to either the open or the laparoscopic group. Those are two case studies, including mine, which you can call it a third. So those, it is real that robotic colorectal surgery is absolutely cost-effective when done correctly. So let's talk about some tips to decrease operative cost. I, and many of us in the colorectal robotic circle, will do the same instruments every single time. We will use the same instruments as multifunctional tools. For example, we use a vessel sealer, can be used for mobilization plus vascular takedown, for throwing, say, a stitch as an example. We will cut costs when possible. For example, we may use monopolar hook cautery because it's cheaper than monopolar scissor cautery. We will do everything possible to minimize unnecessary tools. In other words, do I really need a laparoscope at the beginning of the case? Do I really need to open a needle driver or can I use that, say, vessel sealer to throw that one stitch that I wanted to at the beginning of the case? And you will build efficiency through repetition of the operation. Repetition builds mastery. The more you do, the better you get. Here are the take-home points. Robotic colorectal surgery is absolutely cost-effective, provided... The surgeon is improving patient outcomes. So you're not doing your due diligence. You're not working to improve your clinical outcomes. You're not doing your, your work to improve yourself. Your patients aren't going to benefit either, and it will not be cost effective. Conversions from robotic to open or lap surgery is very costly. So you got to ensure that all the relevant people are aware of learning curve costs, and the surgeon must have been bought in and be dedicated to robotic surgery because just dabbling a little bit, doing a little bit here or there is expensive. And if you're going to be that dabbler, which is that last point here, if you're going to be that chronic 
robotic surgical dabbler, it's never going to be cost effective. You got to do this and do it right. The more you do this last point, the better you get. The better you get, the faster you get. The faster you get, the better you get, the cheaper you get. This is the take home point. Clinical outcomes absolutely improve the more you do. So do it, do it right, and do it well.